Howdy fellow model railroaders, my name is Kevin Brown and I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Uh, in today's episode I want to go over em railroad employee timetables like this, which I found to be very useful documents both for researching railroads, uh, for modeling and for uh, train spotting. Uh, in addition, I have some footage from uh, my group, the N Scale of Bloomington Normal, got together if, over the Christmas time and just set up our modules and played, and that was quite fun, so I've got some footage from that. I've also made some nice progress on my layout. I want to go over that as well. Uh, first and foremost, though, I want to do a shout out for one of our own. Uh, this is for BNSF 6951, uh, Vinny Sestito. Uh, he is one of the pillars of our community. He has a a lot of amazing videos. If you haven't checked out his videos yet, you really ought to. I assume most of the people that have subscribed to me are also well familiar with Vinny. Um, he has run into some problems uh, financially. Uh, he needs to replace his water service to his house. Uh, I went through that. That's a messy, expensive process. When I did it, fortunately, I was still making a pretty good wage and had some overtime to boot. Vinny is a uh, retiree on a fixed income, and this is a great deal of money, and it's really going to crimp his style. So uh, I was hoping that you could uh, join me and try and donate a little money to help him out in this time of need. Uh, I'll put a, uh, a link here for how you can do it directly. Uh, if that doesn't uh, suit you, you can also go through, uh, I would check out his video where he talked about this, which is uh, titled Happy New Year. This is from his live feed last Friday, and there are various ways in the comments there how you can help out by PayPal, which he doesn't have a PayPal account, and other means. Um, so uh, I, would, I suggest you check that out, and if you can afford to, uh, lend a hand. Um, so with that being said, uh, next I'd like to go over the uh, updates on my layout, uh, and uh, thank you very much for watching. The biggest change to the layout is I've managed to install this double crossover on the Missyapolis side. Uh, I needed to do that because I found that doing runarounds was ridiculously difficult and it also uh, definitely sped up uh, serving these industries. Um, usually there's uh, maybe two or three drops for power that have to be hooked up back to the uh, mess that is my wiring harness. Uh, but when this was all said and done, there were seven different drops because this is, of course, insulated across both boundaries. So there had to be power on each side. So I ended up using uh, barrier strips, a barrier strip to uh, wire everything together. And now there's only two drops out to, towards my wiring harness. So that worked out pretty good. I've had a chance to operate with it a little bit. Uh, it really has made a difference. So uh, I'm very pleased with that. Now... Uh, for a um, personal milestone, this means that all of my modules have all their track work done. And that's a good thing. I can start concentrating on more on scenery. Now, next I want to show I also managed to get the uh, carrying cases built for these two modules. Uh, and I'll show you how those look in just a second. Okay, these are my, the two carrying cases and storage boxes that I made for the two modules that's, that lacked them. Uh, do a quick view here which isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, but because of it's necessary to, uh, to cushion the module against certain stresses and to try and show it a little better, here's a uh, case for another module I have with the module inside. As you can see over, probably better over here, the connectors extend past the module itself. And therefore, it has to be cushioned here and here to make sure it doesn't ba uh, uh, break the uh, connectors by going up against the module box. Uh, again, it may not seem like much, but it's another part of a personal milestone. Now, all my modules have their cases and can be stored. Now, I want to show one other thing to demonstrate just what that entails. I wanted to give you an idea just how much space all these module boxes take up uh i have enjoyed making a layout out of modules uh but I, I was really surprised at just the storage space required for everything an empty box takes up just as much room as a full box uh but again i've enjoyed uh this approach and as you can see there's 11 regular boxes which are the ones i hand built for all the modules in the layout and then over here, 
are two that uh, I built earlier. Uh, they were uh, cobbled together out of some boxes for my old job. And uh, they're no longer in the layout. They were replaced by the Missy Apples module. So all told, I think it ends up being 13 boxes. Uh, I'm fortunate I have the, the space for everything. And I'm really glad that they're all done now. So uh, I can start moving on to other things. I know it's probably a little early for uh, New Year's resolutions. But my New Year's resolution in 2019, I want to get all the rest of the basic scenery done uh, throughout my layout. And so I can start working on... Uh, uh, more detailed stuff and start thinking about a larger layout. So anyway, uh, enough said about all this. Next I'd like to go over uh, quickly what I like about uh, employee timetables and uh, the uses. Uh, stay tuned. Howdy again. I have a long interest in employee timetables. I think they're fascinating documents. Uh, I've always had, I've had a collection of uh, the Gulf Mobile in Ohio employee timetables from around here and also the Chicago Northwestern which went through the backyard of my first apartment when I was in college in Iowa. Uh, recently I was having some discussions with Redbird Tony uh, concerning the uh, uh, Gulf Mobile in Ohio main line in the state of Illinois, my home state, that I knew absolutely nothing about and that was the line from St. Louis to Cairo, Illinois. And the more I looked into it, the more I found interesting. So I thought I would do a little research and get some idea how it was uh, put together. And the first place I went to was employee timetables. So I thought I'd use it as an example of how you can use them for research. Um, you'll find that a lot, the biggest problem with employee timetables is finding the exact uh, division or subdivision you're looking for. Most railroads are broken into many units and trying to find the exact one you need uh, it's not always easy. Uh, for example, in this project, I already knew that the line that went through Bloomington here was called the Eastern Division. The line that went from Springfield to Kansas City was the Western Division. So I had no idea what the uh, name was for the line that went through from St. Louis down to Cairo and come to find out it's the Northern Division. It's south of all of those, but it's still the Northern Division. This has much more to do about with the uh, original designation under the Mobile in Ohio than it does with any modern uh, uh, geography. So that's where I started. As you can see, I should be more careful. Uh, a lot of these are available as PDFs online. Uh, and I downloaded two for the, uh, the area, the region I was looking at. This one is right on the cusp of desalization in 1948. And there's another one here, a little later, here we go. Time number two, this is in 1975. Uh, so uh, by grabbing as many of these as humanly possible, it's easy to put together a picture of the railroad itself. Now uh, I'll go ahead and uh, show you one particular example in some detail. And also try and show you how you can use it for model uh, for modern railroads and train spotting. Okay, now we're zooming in on that 1948 railroad timetable, and I'll show you some of the specifics you can expect to find in it. First off, it's referred to as the Murfreesboro District at that time, and it lists all the stations between East St. Louis, excuse me, St. Louis and North Cairo, all in order each one showing the length of its passing siding, the station number, mile marker. So that's all very interesting information. And also there's usually a series of abbreviations that show what facilities are available at each of those stops. The other columns over here are for each individual train. This is an older timetable, so they still scheduled uh, freight trains. Uh, the first class trains listed in the first two obviously are passenger trains still, and second class would be manifest freight. Traditionally, third-class trains, the locals, uh, would be on here too, but it looks like by this time they had already switched those over to being extras and therefore not bound to the schedule. So right there's quite a lot of information about the district, but for my money, the least is interesting, get to it here, is the special instructions. You never know what sort of information you're going to find in the special instructions for the district. It shows, for example, all the railroad crossings on this page. And on this page, which I find really interesting, 
And if you can see that right there, let's see if we can zoom in a bit. It says business tracks not shown as stations on face of timetable. This is showing you where all the industry tracks are. Uh, the mile post it is and the car capacity and what side they open up to. You never know what sort of information you're going to find. If you wanted to model this railroad, information like this is invaluable. Now I uh, want to show a few other things. These are timetables I bought. Let's move that back out. Uh, this is a later timetable after the Illinois Central Gulf took over. You'll notice it's part of the St. Louis Division now. And now it is referred to as the Sparta District. And this is in, what year is this? 1975. Uh, let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit. Not very good with this. And it is the same basic district. It's now called the Sparta District. They still have some second-class trains uh, scheduled. And uh, all the stations are listed as before. Uh, but some of them, are, there's not as many listed. So some of the stations have been abandoned or not used since this time. This... Uh, timetable I think cost me 10 bucks on eBay so if you know what you're looking for it's not a terribly expensive thing to do and this is an even later one LA Central Gulf and now it's the Midwest Division yay so it's changed again again finding out exactly which one to find to look for is not the easiest I kind of cheated if you'll see Let's see if we can wrong way there's a column here on the front of all these that lists various people of importance to get a hold of and it also lists what towns they're in and on ebay you can usually zoom in and if it had the right town here i was looking for sparta then i thought well this must be the right one so it shows how trying to track a line as things change uh, as its designation changes that's one way to do it um now for an example of how to use these in a more modern setting if you remember a few a few well, quite a few uh, videos ago, I did some train spotting with some friends down in Decatur, and I had no idea how important Decatur was to the uh, Norfolk Southern. So I went online and got downloaded an older uh, employee timetable, and theirs is quite graphic. It shows. All of the basic layout of the line, uh, the mile marker, where they're at, and what I'm looking for specifically. We were pretty much here at Decatur. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. And it had the designation, which I thought was kind of cool, of Wabbock. And that's the Wabash and I see where they cross, and that's exactly where we were standing and taking pictures. But as you can see, this goes through the entire district, all of their track layout, etc. So this gives you some idea where the trains are spotting, where they're going. Uh, and I, I found them pretty handy, and it doesn't cost much to download and print them. Um, so that's kind of my spiel on uh, why I like employee timetables. Uh, if you're interested in doing any research on a railroad, I really recommend you start there. Um, so uh, let's see, I guess next I would like to show you some uh, footage from our uh, uh, fun run here in town where we uh, got together over the Christmas vacation and ran some trains. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
times all the wheels are in the uh, junction boxes, life is good. We had a really good time getting together over the Christmas break and running some trains. Uh, that's kind of all I got to uh, offer this time. Uh, quick heads up here, the end scale of Bloomington Normal, my modular group will be at the Great Train Show in St. Charles, Missouri, January 26th and 27th. Uh, that should be a real, that's a big show. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to set my modules up, but I'm definitely going to try and stop by and say howdy. Uh, also, we're going to be setting up in the Gridley Public Library in Gridley, Illinois. Uh, February 1st and 2nd. It's a nice little meet. If you get a chance, if you're in that area, please stop by and say hi. Um, as always, if you like what you saw, please uh, hit like and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time.